All right, how's it going everyone? So I wanted to give a quick little overview of how the T3 stack is kind of set up. If you don't know what the T3 stack is, um, let me kind of show you real quick. Um, so if you go to this repo, there's a create T3 app project, and you can run this command to basically set up a project that has the following things in your stack. It gives you Next.js, TRPC, Tailwind, CSS, TypeScript, Prisma, and Next Auth. So this is like the bare bones of the stack. Um, and this is kind of created by Theo, who's another YouTuber, so check him out. But I want to give a quick overview of how like you can kind of work with this. Um, mainly because there's someone else trying to use this. I'm trying to help out on my Discord. So if you want more information, be sure to join my Discord if you want to kind of talk to me directly. So when you set the project, I'm not going to kind of walk you through the entire thing because you should be able to read me, right? So once you've created your project, um, I did have to add a couple of things. Um, for example, I added a command to launch Prisma Studio, which is a way to basically look into your database to see your different, you know, models that are set up, okay? So one of the components of the stack is Prisma, which is a ORM for your database, right? So if I look at this Prisma folder, this is where the schema is defined, and this has like all of your different data models. So a lot of these um, are just created off out of the box for next auth. So like account, session, ID, or sorry, session, user, verification token, etc. These are all like the defaults for next auth if you want to kind of set up authentication in a database and keep track of your users and who logged in, who's logged in. Um, so this file is kind of important to understand because this is how you define your database tables. If you don't know how SQL works or how like MySQL works or whatever, typically you structure your data in a bunch of different tables and those tables can reference other tables using some type of relationship, right? Um, so when you actually have the schema defined, there are a there is a command you can run to basically migrate all of these models. So when I say migrate, I mean it looks through these models, it's going to create migration scripts, and then it applies those to whatever database that you have set up. Okay, so if you type npx prisma migrate dev, that's going to basically compile this and create some TypeScript files that your, your project can start using to get that IntelliSense, but it also creates migration scripts and it's going to apply them to your database. Okay, so luckily you don't actually need a database to get running with this stack because I think out of the box, it's going to be using uh, SQLite. So if I look at this Prisma file and go to the top, you'll see line 10, it's saying that all the data should be stored in SQLite. But at some point when you go to production, you probably wanna actually put in a real database URL with a password, etc. But for right now, you should be able to just run this command and that'll create a SQLite database file, which will basically set up all your data models, your tables and whatever. You can start querying and inserting data into those. All right, so that's kind of like the first step. And um, let me show you, after you've done all that, you've, you know, you're on the migrate dev step, you can load up Prisma Studio and go to localhost 5555. And you'll see that there are a bunch of data models that you can kind of use here, right? So for an example, if we go into user, you'll see that I have one record for my name and my email. Um, and this was created automatically through next auth. So that brings me to my next point. How is next auth working? Okay, so I have a, a simple sign in button here. And I do want to say that I did change a little bit in the UI, so this isn't exactly what you're going to see if you create a T3 stack using this helper setup. But when I click this sign-in button, this is actually going to redirect me to a Google sign-in page. So let me just go ahead and say sign-in with Google. And the first, the first time you do this, it's going to basically create a user for you inside of that Prisma database that we talked about. And then from that point on forward, you can use that user information to kind of keep track if the user has subscribed, maybe like you're building an application that needs a monthly subscription, and you can keep track of that by using this user model or creating new tables to kind of link it all together. So at this point, we are signed in, and you can see that the, the dashboard kind of changed a little bit, and we also have a sign out button. So let me walk you through that whole process of like, how is that all working? Okay, so we are using Next Auth, which is located in source pages api auth dot 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 next auth okay so this allows you to hit some endpoints um, that we saw earlier where basically you can hit a slash api slash auth slash sign in 
and that's going to show you all your providers that you have set up. So in this case, we have only a Google provider, um, but you can set up like Facebook, you can set up um, GitHub if you want to. But this is going to basically allow the user to pick what provider they want. And we have that hooked up with an adapter to Prisma, right? So the moment the user logs in, it automatically creates that user entry in our user table. And we can kind of use that from that point forward. I did add a callback here, which I don't think came with the initial setup of T3 stack, which basically I want to keep track of the unique ID of the user uh, in the session. And we'll see how sessions work in just a second. So at that point, what you can basically do is if you just go to your URL and go to slash API slash auth slash sign in, that's where it shows you that sign in page that we just saw a second ago. Okay, there's also a sign out URL that we can go to. But once you've signed in, I'm going to set some cookies on your browser. So if I go to application and I go down here to cookies, you'll see that we have a next auth session token and some other stuff as well. So these are the tokens that's kind of keeping track of if you're signed in or not to the application. And we use that to dynamically show content based on that. So let's go back to the main page. So um, this whole application is built using Next. So the structure of Next is you typically have a source folder and then you have a pages folder. And every file and directory in this pages folder will correspond to the URL that you have typed in, right? So at the very, very um, base URL of your project, that's going to load an index file. Okay, so let's look at the index.tsx. And let's kind of look through this real quick to see how I had that dynamically loading some data based on if I'm logged in or not. All right, so when you're using next auth, there is a hook that you can use called next auth slash react. And you can use this in your components to know if you're logged in or not. So if session is defined, right? So this, this is an object destructuring where I'm basically saying, grab me the data property that comes from this hook, rename it the session. And then down here, I'm saying, if session is defined, we're going to say welcome, we're going to show a greeting message, and then we're going to show a sign out button. If session is not defined, we are just going to show a sign in button. So that's kind of how you saw that logic in the UI changing. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I do want to share uh, one more thing. So that, that's kind of like how next auth is set up. There's, I, I think I kind of covered the basics of it, where you can actually get the session in your React components to know if the user's logged in and get more information about the user, such as their unique user ID if you need that. But the next thing I want to kind of talk about is how is TRPC set up, right? So TRPC is like a middleware. It's like the communication layer between your front end and your back end. Typically you use REST or you can use GraphQL. TRPC is just another approach, right? So how does this work? Well, um, in the UI, you can basically do one of two things. You can say TRPC use query, or you can say TRPC use mutation. Query is typically when you just need to fetch data back, and mutation is when you need to actually upload or change data on your back end, right? So it's kind of like a, a git and a post in REST. But what you can do is if you're doing a query, you can basically provide it the name of your TRPC method. So in this case, example.hello. And then you can pass it some data, right? So I'm, I'm passing some text that says from TRPC, right? So let me show you how this works. Um, this is going to basically make a network request, which I go over here to my network request. You should see it make a request to a hello endpoint, which we can see here, hello.example.batch. And then if I look at the payload that comes back, it's kind of um, hard to parse through because I believe this is using something called SuperJSON. But at some point, there's some data that you can get and it has a message. Okay, so let's figure out how does a backend actually know how to send back some data with this TRPC method. So TRPC is set up in this project. If you go to server and you go to router, you will see that there is an index here, and that's kind of where the TRPC router is all kind of set up. Um, there is a create router function, which we'll look at in a second, but for the most part, we set up a router, and then you can set up basically different mutations or queries that the front end can hit. In our case, we just hit a example dot something endpoint. So you can look here, there's a dot merge method you can use to kind of combine namespaces and routers together. So let's go ahead and look at the example router, which is the one that we just hit and I showed you in the network, the network tab of Chrome. So this one, I think we hit example.hello, and this is kind of how you bind new methods to your TRPC router, right? So I'm going to say, allow us to do a query on the name hello, which again, if I go back to index T3 
TSX, you'll see that we hit example dot hello. So this is like the, the method name that we're trying to call. And then if you look here, there's two things that you pass it. You pass it the input. So the thing that you expect the front end to send in, which happens to just be some text. And this is a validation library called Zod, where we can basically validate the inputs that the user send in. So in our case, we're saying that the user must send in some text that is a string. And there's a bunch of different properties you can kind of, or methods you can kind of chain onto this to kind of make it optional or required or allow it to have certain values, etc. But um, once the endpoint has validated the input and everything's good, it calls this resolve method. So this is where you do your like your Prisma requests and you can do whatever you want in here. So in our case, I think you can actually access the Prisma client like this. So if you were to pass in context here, I could potentially do a Prisma query. So I could say context.prisma.example. Well, actually in our case, I don't think we're going to use example. I think we're going to do, uh, we could say session. And then we could say find many and basically return every single user who happens to exist in our database. I mean, obviously we want to do that, but I'm just showing you like how you could potentially do a query against your database inside your TRPC query endpoint, right? But in our case, what this endpoint is doing is just taking the text the user has sent in and sending back a greeting message. So let's go back to the index.tsx and let's look. You see here, we get back some data from that use query all, and I'm just renaming it to hello. But down here, we're actually saying hello question mark dot greeting um, to basically access that thing that we just saw on the TRPC endpoint here. All right, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. This is how you set up TRPC endpoints. Um, there is some context that we customly set up here, which you can kind of provide uh, if you remember in that CTX, which was here. This is like some custom thing that you can actually pass in different properties. So we have the context set up here and these are the things that you have access to. You have access to the request, the response object, session, and Prisma. So that's why we were able to access ctx.prisma, but there's also some other things that we can access as well. So keep that in mind. Um, and then there's also an example of like, how do you make an authenticated GraphQL endpoint, or sorry, not GraphQL, a TRPC endpoint. And you do something like this. You can do, you know, dot middleware and you can verify that the user is actually logged in or not here. So we won't really go into that. But that's kind of an overview of how TRPC works in this project. Um, in the front end, though, TRPC, I believe, is kind of using React Query behind the hood. So most of the methods that you can see, out, see with React Query, you can do with this TRPC use query method. So like if you wanted to, you could potentially add a callback here called like on success. And you could do some extra logic here if you want to. You just have to go read the React query manual or documentation and kind of understand like what additional properties can you pass to use query or to use mutation. Um, and that's kind of, you know, how it's all set up. Behind the scenes, we're using Tailwind CSS to style everything. So, I mean, this isn't really a tutorial on Tailwind, but a quick overview is you basically apply these different shorthand class names to your DOM elements directly and it will style them on the page. So let's just walk through one quick scenario. Let's say I said, um, I, I asked you to add a new page that can do some type of new functionality, okay? So with Next.js, what you do is you would make a new file here inside of uh, wherever, you can name it whatever you want. Let's say I said, make a new endpoint called like pricing. And on that page, you wanna be able to show like some pricing for a SaaS product. Well, you go here inside of pages and you make a new file called pricing.tsx because the way next routing works is it's file based. So the name of your file is going to be the actual route and you can kind of define a component and just follow this other index file, for example, so that's how you can make new routes. You can make nested routes as well. For the most part, we aren't going to be touching this API folder much because this was mainly just to set up the TRPC uh, router and logic code. If you ever need to add new endpoints or methods that the user can actually invoke, you are going to be modifying stuff inside the server slash router. This again is where all the TRPC methods are defined. So you're probably gonna be using this one to change or add new functionality that the UI can invoke to either fetch data or store new data. And then there's a couple of like, you know, global styles. I'm not gonna go through that. Like a, a utilities TRPC file that, you know, I think this is just some setup information to getting it all work with hooks. 
a public folder, which is just where you can store some public images or fav icons, etc. But I think that is the basic overview of how this whole project is set up. I'm sure I've missed a few things or two. I didn't really talk about like the Tailwind config or the you know post CSS config or the next config. You can go read up on the docs or read up on another tutorial to get information about that. But I just wanted to kind of show you how this project is set up with the TRPC because it's kind of new. Um, at least for probably my viewers, they probably never heard, never heard of TRPC and neither have I since recently. So that is kind of how you do it. Um, one more example I guess I could do is, uh, well, let's say I told you I want the user to be able to upload a to-do list item to my backend, right? So what you probably do is you go into your source folder, you gotta go into server, you gotta go into router, and then you go into here and you probably make a new router here, like I could call it uh, to-dos. And then I could say like to do router or to do's router. And then I would make a new file here called to do's router or to do's, whatever you want to call it. And we'd probably follow the same approach that we do for example.ts, where we create a new router here, we export it called to do's router, and then we can kind of define whatever query or dot mutation that we want to be able to support from the backend. So anyway, uh, hopefully that was a good overview. Leave me a comment if you thought it was. And also be sure to join my Discord if you want to ask me questions directly or you're kind of confused with anything I talked about. Have a good day and happy coding.